Hello and welcome to IO Live. I'm Florina Montanescu and I'm here with Chet Haas, the Android Toolkit Lead. Hi Chet. Hello Florina. Tell me Chet, what's new in Android P? Oh, are there new things? Let me think. Uh, yes, in fact there are. Um, so there's a few new things. Um, one of the important ones uh, that we heard about in the keynote too was about dynamic app bundles, but I think there's another video on that, so I'm gonna lead people to do their own research on that. Um, something else that was big was slices and actions. So both of these are ways of propagating intents that your application can take care of um, deeply in other applications. So you can propagate this information in a way that maybe the assistant or search can take advantage of that and perform that action uh, via like a button, right? So it can say, oh, I can, I can handle this. You put it in an actions.xml file and then search or some application, assistant, whatever, can uh, propagate a button into the UI so the user can click on that to perform that deep action. Slices is kind of like that. It allows you to perform these actions, but with a, a much richer UI. Basically, it's a way for an application to propagate rich UI to perform all kinds of things in another process. How about the battery? Is there anything else finally for battery? How about that battery? Well, we are all power users, unfortunately which means we need to keep working on things that we can do at a, at a platform level to preserve battery for users to get longer battery life. A couple of the things that are interesting that are going on in this release uh, includes app standby buckets. Um, so we determine the level of activity that a user has with an application, and based on that activity level, we expose capabilities of the platform to that application or not. It may not be appropriate for an application that the user hasn't actually run for a while to be taking up CPU and battery doing this thing in the background that probably the user didn't want them to be doing. Uh, so that's one thing. Another is uh, background restrictions. So if we notice that applications have bad behavior characteristics, things like holding wake clocks for a very long period, which means that the system can't go to sleep, or waking up frequently, or using services when they're not on power that they shouldn't be as frequently as they are, then they'll be propagated into a list that the user can see through settings and then disable background capabilities for that app to make sure that the user has control of how much battery is being used. Okay, cool, so we covered slices, battery, anything else exciting in P? Uh, well, there's exciting and there's necessary. Um, one of the necessary things that's there is that we're preventing applications from calling private APIs. Uh, it is possible now to call APIs which are not in the public platform, but through Reflection or JNI, you can get to these methods anyway. And we allow that because we didn't have a way to really stop that. You can sort of query this and go for it. Well, now in the art runtime, we can detect that you are calling these methods from an application when they shouldn't be, and we can prevent that. So in the preview release, which we encourage everybody to pick up and play with, we have these methods in a light gray or dark gray list, uh, which means that you're gonna get either a warning in the log or a toast popping up on the screen. So if your application is calling these and shouldn't be, you're gonna get a warning about it. But when that release comes out, it'll be on a blacklist and we'll simply stop it from being called. So the call to action would be go run with the preview release for key and make sure that your application is safe from these. Um, and if it's not, then either fix your application or if it is some facility that you absolutely need, then maybe it's something that we can work on and we can put it on a whitelist instead, but you need to tell us that information, which is why we have the preview, so give us that feedback. Okay, great. There's this Android no, 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 no. there, there. No, 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 no. no? That, That's a totally different topic. I think we need to talk oh. about text. Yes, what about text, text? Text happened in, in my larger toolkit team, so I understand that. Uh, in fact, you understand that. I want to ask you about text. So what happened in text? So in text, we released a few new APIs. Um, now you can pre-measure text. So this means that you can move all of that measuring work that takes quite a lot of time um, from rendering a character to a background thread. And, and why is that helpful? Well, because then the text is displayed faster. So faster rendering means less frames skipped. Sure. So it, it's also good because like, it, if it's time for you to display the text and then you have to measure it, it's not very helpful. But a lot of times you know ahead of time when you're going to need that. So you can actually ahead of time shove it off to a background thread so that by the time you need it, 
then you can display the text, which is awesome. We added a new feature for the user, the magnifier, yep. and we also added an API for that. So we now have three methods, uh, magnifier, show, update, and I think this miss. And this means that if you're developing your own custom views that also display text, you can also show that magnifier in your custom view. Also, it's not limited to text. That's the cool thing is we are using it for text because we wanted to make it easier for people to manipulate the cursor, but you can use it for whatever you want. If you need a zoomed in view, that API is general purpose. Okay, that's great. And I think we also added some more improvements on uh, Smart Linkify. Do you know more about that? I do. Smart Linkify is like Linkify, except it's smarter. Uh, so we already have the ability to uh, create links in a block of text for you if we detect things like phone numbers and addresses. That's been there forever. But now through machine learning models that we have on the system, which are used for things like smart text selection, we can detect more complex entities there. Uh, like you may select a word which is part of a larger phrase, which we detect because of this entity detection in the model. Um, you can ask Linkify to detect those as, uh, as entity links as well. Can I now go back to this? Because oh, it feels right. like it's looking over our shoulder. Ah, yes. OK. So, so what's with the Android with a Jetpack? So Android Jetpack is a set of components as well as architectural guidance for helping developers build better Android applications. Uh, most, I would say, all Android developers are familiar with a lot, of, a lot of what is in Android Jetpack already because we have taken all the goodness of support library and put it under this banner, and we are going to continue to add to that specifically with the intent of making Android development better and easier. So I'll give you some examples. One of the big ones, <laughs> one of my favorite things about support library is AppCompat and the way that we baked in the uh, releases for certain APIs into the package names. So now we have package names like V4 and V9 with some of the APIs. We don't even support those releases anymore. So I think all of the existing developers don't even think about it. That's just noise at the top of their at, at the top of their file, right? It's one of those imports they never look at. But I think if you're new to Android or if you're looking at the documentation, I think it's terribly confusing. So we're doing a major refactor where we turn all those package names into Android X dot whatever. Um, the other part of it is uh, the existing architecture components are a big piece of it. Things like lifecycle support and room, view model, uh, all of that stuff is good. Also the new paging library, which went uh, 1.0 this week, uh, paging and recycler view. And we have two new things. Actually, they're, they're to our sides here at the demo table. We have navigation controller and we have work manager. Navigation controller makes it easier to create the links of the flow of your application. Um, it, it makes things like up versus back easier. And we also have a tool in Android Studio where you can visualize this and create those links. Um, so it's sort of an integration of the APIs as well as the tool uh, for making this complex application flow a lot easier to develop. And then Work Manager is about an easier way for creating and executing background tasks. Um, so before we would recommend, well, Job Scheduler is really good for scheduling things at particular times, you know, when Wi-Fi is there, when you're charging, whatever. Um, and that works really well if you're on KitKat and above. What if you're on an earlier release? Well, we also have Job Dispatcher, uh, which is in the Play Services APIs. Well, what if you're on a device that doesn't have Play Services? Well, then you're probably rolling your own solution. So applications would need to do all three of these. Work Manager is an attempt to have a simpler, more elegant, fluent API for doing all this stuff that handles all of that for you. Okay, great. So lots of new things, both in uh, Android, but also with Jetpack. Jetpack. So check out all the videos that we have uh, from, from Google I.O. And also check out the documentation on developer.android.com. Thank you, Chet. Thank you, Florina. This is Florina from I.O. Live.